leave the dot body for noise and the relay. You know those approaches? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay, any item two is the declaration of interest and item on the agenda. Um, received no original request for dispensation. Uh, we did, but the, uh, the big thing, so we have to look at that. Yeah, it's a bit of a step outside of that. Yeah, I think it's no. Can we have that? Yep. Uh, item three is the minutes held on the meeting uh, held on the 1st of November. So we move on to the presentation by Ross on strategic land and uh, Phyllis Planning Service Rate regarding the development proposals for the land of Grays Hill. So we've got Dan from Roscon and Grays from Phyllis. Okay. You want to introduce yourself properly? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you everybody for uh, having us at the last one meeting. Um, my name is Dan uh, Hatcher, I'm the planning director of Ross on strategic land. And um, with, with me is Grace Edmonton from the BPS based in Bedford. Um, and they're acting as our planning consultant for, for this project at uh, Grace Hill. Um, just a little bit about our company. Um, we're a privately owned property uh, growth company based in Warwickshire, um, established in 2005. Um, we've got uh, circa 4,000 plots, uh, either with live planning applications or being promoted through the local plan process at the current time. Um, we're a small but dedicated uh, team of uh, property professionals um, and work alongside a trusted team of professional consultants, including uh, BPS, to deliver uh, high quality, sustainable residential development across England. Um, we're acting on behalf of the landowner uh, to take forward an outline planning application based on the draft allocation within the emerging uh, Bedford Local Plan, which is now being submitted uh, for examination. And as always, we're always keen to to meet local communities, engage um, with with the people um, in the locality, um, to hear hear about any feedback, um, explain our proposals and what we're about um, uh, prior to submitting a planning application. So that's that's basically about what's going on and what we what we, what we do as a, as a, as a business. Um, I think Fraser will now sort of hand over just to explain the purpose of the meeting. Um, and a bit about the proposals that we've got. I've got some draft plans that I'll circulate in a second, uh, so you can comment on those. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I'm Fraser Tim from Philips Planning Services, and we're going to act as the planning agent on the uh, planning application. Um, just very quickly, but what we're going to do is I'm just going to take you through um, a brief thing as to um, you know, what we're here to talk about tonight about the development, about the planning context about what we're doing at this moment in time in terms of the uh, pre-application engagement as well as going through the process that, that the local plan is going through. Uh, we'll also talk through um, where we are in terms of survey work that's being undertaken um, and what we'll do is we'll have questions at the end. So if you've got anything that comes to mind that you want to jot it down, we can open up to questions at the end. So bear with me as I go through because there's quite, there's quite a bit to get through. Um, in terms of uh, the proposed development that's, uh, that's coming forward is for the construction of up to 200 dwellings with associated infrastructure and landscaping on the land of Grace Hill. Um, there's also a proposed new roundabout access, which is proposed for construction on the corner of Grace Hill and the B660. The proposed development will also include an extension to the Park. Uh, pre application inquiry and environmental impact screening has been submitted to the Borough Council. And we're due to meet with them on Monday of this coming week to discuss initial, to discuss initial consultation responses from the technical consultees. The survey work that's been undertaken to support the application is at a reasonably advanced stage, um, and we're hoping to get to a position where the formal submission of the planning application will be in the next couple of months. We're here tonight to seek initial views and comments on the concepts, to get your views particularly associated with local issues that you think what we should be considering, um, and also to understand any concerns uh, that, that may arise from your consideration of these proposals. In terms of the planning context then, and how this is coming forward, you've got the National Planning Policy Framework that's recognised the acute need for housing and that there's a step change in housing supply and the delivery of sustainable residential development. 
Better Borough Council, as you all know, is preparing a new local plan for 2030. The draft plan for submission was approved by Council to submission to the Secretary of State on the 5th of December, and I believe it was submitted on the 14th of December. Uh, two inspectors have since been appointed, as well as a programme officer. We expect to hear more about the programme of the examination over the next few weeks. They're hopeful that the examination will start soon and be completed, I believe, based on the local development scheme, be completed by late summer. Now, the local plan, as it's emerging, um, proposes that the site, which is adjacent, which is to the north um, of the existing Woodlands Park, uh, is proposed to come forward for residential development under policy 24. Um, this is, states that the land of Grace Hill is allocated for residential development and an extension to the north Brickhill Country Park. Access will be, be provided on the B660 Bedford Road, and so B660 Bedford Road is in the northeast of the site. The policy requires the following. A design code to be agreed with the local planning authority, provision of a range of housing types and sizes, provision of a footpath and pedestrian crossing on the B660 Bedford Road, <coughs> to provide safe access to the bus stops, the provision of footpath and cycle links to integrate with the neighbouring development of Woodlands Park, a transport assessment detailing impacts on the highway network and the mitigation measures, and consideration of impacts on the historic environment to minimise harm and, include, sorry, and inclusion of mitigation proposals, site-specific um, flood risk assessment to determine the effects of the development uh, on adjacent uh, areas with respect to flood risk and propose any mitigation, obviously the provision of the country, the country park extension, buffer planting and landscaping, um, and in terms, of, in terms of this, we've submitted a pre-application inquiry to the local authority, and this is now being progressed. The pre-application inquiry has secured already a number of responses back to the consultees, and this includes from policy, archaeology, landscape, conservation, trees, flood risk, recycling, and environmental health and stuff. We're still waiting responses back from the highways, public rights of way, and the education department. Now, we're meeting the borough planners on Monday to start discussions uh, in terms of the form and extent of the planning application and the timing for the submission. Um, Ross Garland have taken over uh, for the range from the existing uh, landowner to drive forward the planning application, and subject to pre application responses, it's hoped that a full formal planning application can come forward in the next couple of months. Moving on to supporting work and what's been done so far. As highlighted, we've, we, we've, we're undertaking a number of supporting uh, assessments to cover up all the technical areas. Um, these include trees, ecology, landscape, transport, flood risk and drainage. In, I'll just run through, we've had quite a bit of feedback already, both from the Borough Council and from our own consultants. Um, in terms of trees, the proposal can accommodate the retention of trees and hedgerows where appropriate. This can be picked up through the detailed design stage. In terms of ecology, the active agricultural use means the site has relatively low ecological value. Key habitats are bound from trees and hedgerows, and which will be maintained. Appropriate safeguards can be employed if deemed necessary, and there is great scope for ecological enhancements through the further tree planting and the extension to the country park. In terms of heritage, the site does not contain any designated heritage assets and is well separated from sites with a statutory designation. Key heritage assets above ground uh, include <coughs> Mowbray Hill Court Scheduled Monument and, and Grace Hill Farmhouse, which is great, great to be listed. Impact on the significance of these assets is unlikely to be significant, and further assessment and mitigation is being considered in consultation with Bedford Borough Council's Conservation Officer. An initial geophysical survey of the land has also found no archaeological features of importance. Landscape. The proposed allocation of land on the flatter part of the site enables the retention of the tree line to rise on a long grace hill. Development uh, can extend up to a 55 metre contour line and adverse impacts, uh, without adverse impacts on the landscape. There is great scope to deliver block woodland planting to enhance the backdrop and add further interest to the skyline, as well as the delivery of the country park extension. The council so far advised that the scheme should ensure delivery of the relevant open space standards at quick play areas and surface water drainage scheme. Moving to transport, a draft transport assessment has been prepared and an access design which will circulate shortly um, uh, for a new roundabout junction at Grace Hill at B660 has been proposed. 
Calculations on the impacts of the future traffic on the road. Sorry, <laughs> so much to go through. <laughs> I hope you're taking it all in. <laughs> um, yeah, the assessment of the impact of traffic has, has been undertaken and is, and is demonstrating that most of the road, local road junctions will operate still well within capacity. We've got a meeting with the highways officer on Monday to review that. And in terms of uh, flood risk and drainage design, um, the Borough Council has adopted supplementary planning guidance which will make sure that it's essential for all used elements to consume its own surface water runoff. The Borough Council favours the provision in the form of sustainable urban drainage systems uh, likely to be delivered uh, as shown on the master plan which will circulate shortly. Um, this will be in the form of open and swale. Initial advice from our drainage consultant has determined that the extent of on-site surface water attenuation um, could be accommodated as shown to ensure the development does not increase flood risk elsewhere off the site. So before we go through the draft concept plan, we've got, yeah. I've got a little white bit of we're all happy to share. And, um, <coughs> Thank you. Just quickly to touch on that, and this is where I'll move away from the notes. 
So there is there is obviously something for, for the borough to consider at this point in time because the, the local plan is, is progressing through its examination. And some people might look and say, well, hang on a minute, this looks to be maybe slightly premature or early in the process, but it isn't because there is a driver in order to get housing underway as soon as possible. That's recognised within the plan. It's also recognised that changes within national policy means that there will be a greater pressure on local, local authorities to meet higher delivery standards. The, the, the local plan is progressing in Bedford is falling under the 2012 National Planning Policy Framework, which means that the target housing figures are lower. But in between the stages of, of the submission to the Secretary of State and through its adoption, <coughs> there is this issue of whether or not you know, the housing level within, within the district should potentially meet the wider, the larger standards that are being put forward, which would increase housing levels within, within Metro Borough. It's really um, sites that are identified and are coming forward as part of an ability strategy that the Borough Council should be starting to identify to engage with those site providers and developers and try to bring those on so that its housing supply in the near term, as of within the next year or so, starts to build back up. The, the housing supply within the district, within the borough, sorry, is, is, is beginning to fall, fall short, so it's beginning to degrade in terms of other sites being developed out. And I think that there's an importance that this local plan is adopted and progressed in order that the housing supply continues uh, you know, uh, without any breaks. So what we have here is a site that's been identified, it's gone through the consultation process, there's been quite a lot of, a lot of work running to getting it into the local plan at this stage. There's been a, a lot of support from the policy team and from, from the, uh, the technical consultees that this is a good, deliverable, sustainable site. Um, and therefore, what Roscon are doing is looking to bring that forward as quickly as possible, ideally in parallel with the, uh, the adoption of the local plan, in order to effectively make a, a strong start and contribution to housing supply within the borough. So, can, can I just ask a quick question following that which goes to the floor? Um, <clears throat> Parish Council sent in a submission of comments in the local plan, as it was the 2035 plan, on the <coughs> And uh, we commented on both policy 1S, the government, and but primarily on policy 24. And we said we noted the inclusion of the other site for residential use with 100 other proposed. You mentioned uh, 200. Yes. So I'm trying to understand where that difference is. Well, I think the best, the best, the best way to look at that is that the, the actual policy that is coming forward is it set to have a maximum number of houses? And that's very specific because the National Planning Policy Framework that's coming forward is encouraging the most efficient use of sites. So in terms of the preparatory work that supported the allocation of the sites, a lot of those, that, that work was done on the basis of identifying what they felt could be accommodated. And the other, I think, that 100 units came out of a, an assessment of the net developable area. But in terms of going <coughs> forward, having already spoken to the policy team about this, they have been clear there's no maximum number that should be allocated. It's quite important you don't set a maximum number because you, what you want is if you identify a site to come forward, you need to ensure that your policy framework enables you to maximise the potential of that. Now, you know, there's still the issue of, you know, is the design appropriate? Can the access take it? What's the impact? Can the heritage, landscape, colours, and so on? There's still constraints that will have to be accommodated by any developer. <coughs> I think it's quite important to recognise that the policy that's progressing at this moment in time is very much on the basis that the development potential of the site is, is effectively open for discussion and it's for the developer, the promoter. To come forward and set out the framework in which that is analyzed. So, have you seen that? Sorry, have you seen our comments? I have, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, it's been saying that, again, going back further, originally there was a request of 500 votes for that, for that basic site. Yes. And I guess when it then comes to the 100, we looked at that and thought, wow, you don't really want 500. 100 sounds like a number which is better than 500. And therefore, we commented on it. We didn't actually support it and we didn't oppose it, but we put in our comments on the Proposal and those are the bullet points in our submission. Um, 
So, okay, so I've got two more comments yeah. and I mentioned two hundred and three comments and makes us the one hour. Are there any questions for anyone around the table from the councillors? Questions? I've I've got one point. Um, I'm very surprised that the archaeological surveys that you did didn't turn anything off because looking at your colour map, the one section that you've labelled as North Brickyard Country Park is archaeologically protected. There were roundhouses found at the West York Way Gate and down Crispin Drive, well, midway down Crispin Drive, which is taking the uh, taking the pounds from the, the stream. So I'm very surprised there's nothing on you on that side as the falls. Uh, and the second comment I would make is um, it, it doesn't look like there's very good cycle and pavement or integration into the <coughs> park. Bearing in mind, Woodlands Park, when designed, was designed with a uh, secure by default fence all the way around the outside, which is also the side that's a thing. Um, so I, I would certainly encourage stronger integration with Woodlands Park, with the bus services that run there. With the play equipment that runs there, I know there is one piece of play equipment in, in this development. Yeah. It's quite a bit on the roof part, so I would certainly uh, encourage a stronger community um, cohesion. Yeah. Okay. Can I respond on the argument? Yeah. Um, <coughs> just, just knowing we get where we are. Um, so, in terms of what we've done so far, we did a, initially a desk based assessment, looked at the historic record, and just did what the uh, the heritage assets that are on the locality and sites. Um, that then led on to um, a geophysical survey being undertaken across the whole of the site. Um, that did identify, there was a Victorian bridge within the centre of the site, so that was picked up, it was picked within the desk base, and then it followed through and was identified in a geophysical survey. We're now at a point where um, further discussions are taking place with the council's archaeologists. And I'm really well, I'm, I'm pretty categorical that we will need to do some further trial trenching in areas of the site where we're proposing development. So, if there is, as I say, the geophysical didn't show any other specific anomalies, but notwithstanding that, there will be some trial trenching work that needs to be done before an application can be determined. So, if there is anything, I mean, it's a bit of a belt and brace approach. So, if there is anything there that hasn't come up from the geophysical survey, that will be picked up through that trial trenching. So, just to give you some comfort that. You know, notwithstanding that we haven't found anything, we're still going to be asked by the yeah. council's archaeologists to do some further work on that. I think there's a third there, that's where a percentage is there for the land to be trial trenched in terms of the, the geo boost enables them to pinpoint areas of interest and minimise how much trial trenching has to be done. But I suspect that we will still have to do that in order to investigate those areas. Mm -hmm. I think, in terms of the pedestrian and sidewalk links, I mean, that's definitely something that the policy encourages and wants to see. So I think. I mean, we've obviously, in terms of the linkages with the park, we have got a, a, a water course that sort of separates it. You know, I, I think there is one existing footbridge over from one side to the other. We are proposing a second footbridge, um, or possibly a third, to, to increase as many uh, crossing points as possible to help integrate that. And then out, going out into the um, Bedford Road on, on the access point, you'll see we're providing some uh, new footways to link up to those existing bus, bus stops on Bedford Road. Again, Sort of link into those um, sustainable transport uh, linkages. So, please, that thank you. Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned about sustainability of the site, but uh, don't get that right. Everybody's going to drive the car up to Grays Hill and down to Bolton Road. Um, can you confirm whether or not every dwelling proposed is going to be within 400 metres of a potential bus stop? That is the movement of the policy nowadays. It would definitely, it would definitely be within a walking, um, a walkable distance. Um, oh, four, 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 the roundabout, so that the tendency would be to catch the bus by Waters Park, which means that uh, possibly this normal footpath is to, to further north. 
should be nearer to where he's going to be able to catch the lower bus series. And then secondly, uh, we've got to pay attention to the part of the bottom side. Uh, I think that should be definite because most people the bridge, not the bridge, not the bridge. Most people will be required to go to the shops or the schools in the facility. <coughs> they won't want to go over the north yeah. the bridge. So I think that's most definite. And uh, there is if they go to the secondary school, which is uh, in Footwork, most people would uh, use what we're hoping that eventually the right way will be surfaced so that we'd be able to then go right and right away through the most of the path into to the uh, secondary school. Uh, but primary schools, people would want to go in the sort of southern sort of direction. And there is also a uh, sort of potential bus stop here for the more regular stagecoach service rather than the hourly. Of service from this one here. Now, talking about business, I don't think many, I can't see many people climbing up the hill to a potential bus stop here. But if a bus stop was provided, it would have to be accompanied by a covered shelter because it's quite an exposed uh, area. It would have to be a covered shelter for people to, uh, to uh, stay in while the bus. Uh, a number of people are residents that live on the side facing the stream and voice concerns about flooding because they already have issues with their gardens being very watered off from that because obviously the soil is the soil is very clay in the area. How do you think the project would affect that? Well, as I say, we've um, We've been detecting foot modelling uh, of the, the brook. Um, the initial uh, swells that we're showing, so effectively, the studs work basically they hold that surface water from this obviously putting, putting housing on that on the side create, increases the surface water runoff. So those studs are designed to take take or hold that that surface water and then release it slightly back into the into the drainage system and that creek will run up rates. But then it's also the capacity for climate change is also built into the capacity of those, those swells to ensure that it doesn't cause flooding either within the site or and more elsewhere. The site. <coughs> so there shouldn't be any negative impact in terms of flooding. But as I say, we've done some uh, flood modeling work and that's just, just been completed. Um, our, our drainage engineer has, has estimated at the current time <coughs> how much flood attenuation we need on site, and that's shown uh, on the plan at the present moment. But obviously, if we need to enlarge those, if, if needed, that that would be done. We've ultimately got to satisfy the environment agency and the local legal local authority that it's uh, what we're proposing is is going to be safe. It's not going to be to put, put this stuff on site or elsewhere. So the standards are very you know, very clear, and we know what we've got to achieve to, to make sure that that's because obviously the hills is at the bottom of the hill, so yeah, the water's potentially going to be coming down towards the yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a very important point because when they build. The Woodlands estate, we told them about the flooding issues mm. and they went through all the different checks and boundaries and everybody else said it was fine. And the next thing they had to evacuate MG to court because it was underwater. And the water just came flying down the hill. So they really underestimated everybody got it wrong. So just want to walk through. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously concerned about the permeability of the site and how it relates to the Woodlands Park because there, there's the idea that you put a big fence around it and no one gets out. Or there's the idea that you allow people to, to go through because. There'll be people who will live on this estate who will be walking to school, perhaps at um, Tommy Moore or something like that. Um, perhaps in the Scott. We don't want everybody to drive down the hill. I think it's really important. But the thing that um, I would be campaigning for, because a lot of people will drive down the hill, is trying to get out into speed campers on the back of this scheme. Uh, it'll only cost you 60k and it'll make a lot of people happy, uh, especially the people who live on the hill. Because <coughs> I'm inundated with requests for South Street Camps and Peter is one of them. And if a mitigation for the speed of the traffic going down the hill was that we were able to, on the back of this, get average speed cameras, I'd be very pleased because it makes a lot of people happy. I think um, the, our transport, our draft transport assessment, is, uh, uh, it's identified that there's been a 
two or three accidents um, on, on the Bedford, Bedford Road in the proximity of the junction. So it, it doesn't seem to be necessarily a particular uh, a particular accident black spot. Oh, I mean, there's an accident black spot there. You've got to see the fence demolished every few months. You're not driving through it. I'm just looking to get a present out of this. Yeah. You know, I, I just want to make a game for us and a game for this community would be having speed cameras on, on Cleet Hill. And, mm -hmm. and it's amazing how, many people, how popular people would find that. Yes. I, I, I say we've got to make sure that the forest will meet on Monday. But yeah. what came out of the transit assessment was the, the fact that the instruction of a roundabout there will act as a, a, as a traffic calm measure in itself. I think on the, on the drawings, it can yeah, suggest the instruction of a It's a traffic on. going down to the That was sweet. Yeah, but we're at the golf course and the crossing where the, where the little kids come out of the park. Uh, sorry. Whereabouts do you mean then? Do you mean between? The top of the hill is going around the bend. Yeah. And then coming down. Yeah. Coming down the straight yeah. 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 And, and my, my rationale would be you're going to put more traffic on that spot. It's going to be more speeding traffic because they're going to go to school and go to work and all the rest of it. So we'd really like, I'd really like that. As a local councillor, I'd like that. As a transport portfolio holder, I'd really like that. I think it was very popular as well. Um, having had the experience of Woodlands Parkway, it's at the end of the um, at the end of the, the the parish and stuff. Are you thinking of um, because we've now put some cameras in Woodlands Park for community safety? What community safety measures are you going to be putting? Because this will be at the back and it will be nice actually for it to not to be used as an exit by people maybe doing naughtiness within the parish and then going to the new real estate and because there's so many other roads that way. Would it be helpful? Would you be able to put some um, cameras at the exit because you've got one exit out of the real estate you know, on the plan mm -hmm. so it would be good to have some cameras like we have at the entrance of Park. <coughs> yes, that's the way. Any other questions? Um, are, so, uh, Woodlands Park is um, rather short of, I mean, so this is one of the most accessible transport points from Cleeton that um, uh, one thing that's going to exacerbate the, the amount of travelling required is that the nearest local shop, I think, is over on the Crime Shops, which is quite far away in Woodlands Park. So, Woodlands Park itself, uh, I believe, does not have anything. And I, I well, there's nothing mentioned here. I, mean, I, I think quite important um, the footings and the in your design so far. And, um, I'm worried that this will mean, this will actually mean that, that to, get, to get anywhere, you know. It's, it's going to be, if, if those walking routes are not good enough, or even, even if they are, it's a long way to... Seven people who can walk back out. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're going to end up with an argument. And that's, that's my concern with this. Um, as I say, the policy itself is really, you know, just people have nothing in terms of encouraging or making sure there are those pedestrian and cycle links that are provided and you know, the upgrade of the uh, existing footways uh, to link into Woodlands Park. So that's definitely what we're, we're looking to achieve. Uh, we're also um, obliged to provide a couple of travel plans on the site, so we're going to try and encourage a um, commercial shift from private cars to. to um, so it basically sets a target and encourages, provides information, and um, uh, sort of potentially. Uh, travel, travel passes for buses, etc. To try and encourage people to use more public transport or make people aware of what's, what's within the locality so that they can, you know, minimise the amount of um, public transport like private cars. So there are measures to measure that we're looking at to try and encourage uh, more sustainable transport. Chris and Kat. <coughs> so just to touch on that, too, actually, probably the nearest portal for milk. Right mm -hmm. to the new site will be the corner shop in Ravenswood. Mm -hmm. As you're considering four cycleways into Woodlands Park, 
they are very, very, there's nothing on that verge of the way it's done, and it might benefit some form of certainly footpath, um, at least on one side, as far as uh, the, the, the village extent of the range, and then they would have access to the community drainage. So, miles, check it out. I think, I think we, 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 you know, any, any promoter is going to have to be you know, mindful of not offering things that can't deliver because mm. even though it's a mile, it's, it's, it's quite a long way to provide what would have to be an adoptable standard for that. Um, I know exactly what you mean, but it's just the verges that go down to the yeah. centre of that, that crossroads. Um, I think in some ways that the borough council is going to want us to integrate more into the town itself rather than encourage uh, pedestrian movement to go out to the site, albeit I, I do take your point that shop might be a little bit closer in terms of the growth line. Catherine. Um, I know you might not have any <coughs> control over it, but it's in terms of um, health provision and health services because you bring in more housing and there isn't any, um, the nearest doctors would be into the town centre and be talking about transports and things like that. Have you considered any way of trying to see if they can do something more local to the estate or... I know it's maybe something that's out of your control, but I'm just thinking the number of housing that's coming up and there's no surgical provision. I would say I think that's, that's more likely to arise from the strategic consideration of the whole of the, the town itself and the growth proposed. Um, to 200 units on, on its own in terms of an extension would be warrant sort of the new provision of, of GP services. I think that has to be driven more by the health service in terms of what it's looking at to capacity and so on. But again, I, I think it's, it's about connecting in to those existing facilities. And then also, if not necessarily, you have a question or two. Can I just come back and to the question of connecting into the next part? So, so, one of the comments we make is that we want to see, if before any housing is occupied, we want to see the connections in place to the Wigan Park community. Because the concern is we don't want to see like a little ghetto over there of people living surrounded by a sea of mud with no connectivity to the existing community. So, I think, you know, because I think. Experience of what happened in this park when they were developed was trying to afford it because you had people trying to, you know, get in and out of the state past going on at the time. It was not a great situation for investors, I don't think. Um, and I've just come back specifically to the point about you know, the bridges and the footpaths and cycle paths. One of the things we have been planning to do is with, um, so I think Chris mentioned the gates, sorry, the fencing around the existing development. There's a lot of, there are many informal gates in that fencing that people have created gates by unbolting some of the connections. And we have planned to replace a couple of those on it from the formal gates. It's not happened yet because they're, they're not been adopted yet. So they're not been adopted from, from, the, from the first one to the borough. Um, but one of the options was across the, is it the South Coast at that point? Is that correct, Chris? Yes, yeah, there's an informal gate there. Yeah, isn't that one of the sides we looked at? Yeah. <coughs> that is a potential because yeah. where the gate is, is opposite the, uh, the outer yeah. where you saw it. it. It's not directly outside somebody's property. So I think the challenge, the difficulty with the existing foot, the first foot, the actual current footbridge is literally a footbridge, not suitable for, for the cycling. So the cycling to just Go straight across because you have to go up across and down. Um, and then if you when you exit onto the into the country park on the other side, it gets onto multiple. Uh, so there's no direct connection onto the foot onto the cycle path network. And down the southern end, the problem you've got there is that you show them your plan for the uh, existing driveway. But it, as you will see, it actually goes around the back of the houses and behind Westrow Way, not on the existing proper tarmac footpath that's actually within the country park. So we have a historic boundary, we have a historic line that is basically, un you can't get down, it's totally overgrown now as far as I can. The last time I tried, it was totally unsatisfying because of brown. 
and actually it, you, it ought to be rerouted on the on the wide lovely new tire path, but that's still not adopted. So you know it's like a chicken and egg really want that to be adopted, you want the path to be rerouted, and then potentially you could connect onto it or connect and also probably connect through into the main space of my middle around the so if, if, <coughs> through the salt code way connection. You know, so which would require an extra so an extra use of that. Two extra bridges, not just because they put bridge, but then two bridges which are suitable for cycle and yeah. cycle use as well as pedestrian use. And the last comment I just want to throw in for a moment. <coughs> One of the problems we had last year, was it last year when we had the, the hand grenade thing? Was that yeah. last year or 2017? Uh, last year, last year. I lost track of it. If we don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing me. Yeah. So basically, unfortunately, the estate of uh, Park is like many, many of your estates around the edge of Bedford, many similar towns yeah. where there's one way in, one way out. In Wooders Park, there is a sort of extra, <coughs> more internal, blocked off. But obviously, when that incident happened, she couldn't get in and out of the estate. So there seemed to be a potential alternative. Now, any isolated estate, like the one you're proposing, you want now, 100 pounds or 200 pounds, whatever it might be, it's one way in, one way out. It does provide, it does, if you like, result in a, in a vulnerability from a safety point of view. You know, if there's an incident from fire or whatever, you go in and if they're over blocked, then obviously, potentially, it's the only precaution. Now, I just haven't discussed it at all with the council or the department. You know, I just wondered whether, you know, do we want to think about that to make more of a safety? We don't want to see it as a through route necessarily because of the, you know, the, the impact of that. But do we want to have another option to allow a controlled way as an emergency access in between the two states? Are you preferring to answer that? No, I just I'm, I'm maybe want to think about it and, and put both of them here. And looking for fairly rapid feedback, aren't we? Sure. No, I'm going to say we're happy if, if, you, if you want to discuss it amongst yourselves after we've gone. And, comments uh, by email, you know, we're, we're more than happy to, to, I mean, this is all really useful when we will consider that you've got the knowledge, but yeah, there's a course you've had subsequently, you know, more than happy <coughs> to, to take those on board as well. Yeah, the clerk's got my email address, so if, if there is further thoughts, if you want to send right. those through to the clerk to then be direct at me, we're all ears. Two things. We would need a short amount of time to speak to the residents of Woodland Park and the next case. Uh, yeah, the other thing is we can we can raise that with the highway officer on, on Monday as well, just to, to raise that point and see whether that's something that uh, is it, well, it's a it's feasible and the it's so required and uh, it's to be feasible for it as well. And we can do that back. So I think whatever we have we want to have it would at least be designed and built so that we can't have people driving along the footpaths because we've yeah, we got that problem already. Are there any other, uh, sorry, any other counts? Any other counts? Could you just remind us what the what percentage of social housing was? 60%. The policy is 30%. 30%. 60 houses. Well, 60 houses. I'm just saying, 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 uh, hopefully very quick. First one is with the uh, design of a lot of the new estates uh, around the, the, the borough. Uh, you have a situation where the roads are very narrow, yeah. there's never enough car parking, cars are dumped all over the place. Now hopefully this is not going to be the shape of things to come in this development. And particularly because in a world where everyone's driving an electric car, what facilities are you going to provide people to get the cars charged up? Because the estates that have even been built relatively recently, this seems to be impossible because no one's got anywhere to park a car. They just have to dump their cars wherever they can, basically. So I'm hoping that this is somewhat more sophisticated design based on where we're going with the future of transport and all the rest of it in the future. Well, you might need more <laughs> What should I offer? <laughs> no, I, I think, uh, I mean, the one thing I will say is that um, it's worth highlighting that. Bedford Borough Council has adopted a much more stringent parking standards, which increased from its previous position. So it now requires effectively more, more car parking to be provided. 
provided in, in <coughs> state development. I think pro part of the, the observations that a lot of people make is, is that uh, over the last what, you know, 10, 15 years, there's been quite a lot of development built where you're absolutely right. There is cars parking on the road because there's not enough on the parking. But that was driven by a particular government policy to reduce parking on one on block. Um, and you know, that's a government policy. Everyone spots down that line that reduces parking requirements, and everybody still has the same amount of cars they ever did before. Mm -hmm. What you've got now is a relaxation of that. There's still this push for sustainable development. They still want to, to switch people out of using the car and off our pedestrian and cycle links and access to public transport. But there is also an acceptance that we want to start accommodating the parking. So Bedford Borough has already has already done that, switched into having more uh, more advanced uh, parking standards, including you know it used to be that developers would say I've provided a garage, therefore I've provided a parking space, and include that within their, their numbers. Now you can still do that, but what Bedford have done is adopt a policy that says you can have that, but your garage has got to be a lot bigger to accommodate storage, cycle parking, and so on. So it's trying to tackle that very issue. So whatever development takes place on here will have to meet those standards. I think the, the point on electric vehicles, right, it's definitely something that's coming into, into planning policy more and more. And I think, I think from, from probably the ultimate householder's point of view as well, they will want to make sure that, you know, making sure that the provisions are there in terms of making sure that the, the electricity supplies are provided so that people can, can provide their own uh, facilities to charge electric vehicles and you know that, that's definitely the way things are going and I, I think more and more you're seeing them across the country who has extensive that can provide those, those facilities on top so I think any any house builder generally now is, is, it sees the benefits and it's, it's, it's an extra marketing point from their point of view to, to be able to provide that sort of facility so I think um, it's more than likely that those sort of facilities will be provided by the house builder. What visual impact assessment has been done in terms of looking up that hill, which is a lovely hill to look up at the minute, and it's going to be covered in, in houses, and it's gone from 100 to perhaps 200 that we talked about. Does that mean that these are going to be three-storey houses, or, or you know, what sort of impact are you going to find on that uh, semi-rural uh, you know, development? Well, in, in, terms of, in terms of the work that was done in the allocation stage, there's a lot of potential assessment which, which looked at uh, how you could accommodate development. Obviously you've got Grace Hill rising, you've got that defined bridge line. Mm -hmm. The Borough Council has been very clear that that is to be protected, that will still make, be maintained as the backdrop um, and should be enjoyed in respect of the views out of the, out of the town. Um, I just want to touch again on this point of 100 to 200. The 100 was derived from a calculation done by the Borough Council but is not within the policy. That's their calculation based on starting to look at what might be delivered, pulling that together and getting a global strategic figure. Um, in terms of where we are now, we're obviously looking to uh, examine the constraints of that site, of which landscape is entirely you know, a very important constraint. Um, so far, uh, a further landscape visual impact assessment has been done. Um, you know, the, the content of that will be, will be available for review. Um, and at this moment in time, they're comfortable that actually the allocated area of housing falls within the parameters of the heights offered elsewhere in the, in the town, which was always a key issue. So you've got obviously Woodlands Park sitting slightly lower, but you also have the fact that there are other housing around Woodlands Park which sits slightly higher. So one of the drivers in terms of the landscape assessment is to look sort of slightly more widely of what sort of heights have been allowed across the northern part of Bedford. And that's being taken into account in that landscape assessment and ultimately will drive the location of development and the height of development as well. I think I you know, just add, I mean, it, it's very common when, when a local authority is estimating or making assumptions about the capacity of a site, they, they take a fairly conservative approach because it's, it's a very high level assumption, but they don't want to overestimate because if, if sites don't ultimately deliver what they expected it to deliver, then they, they, they've got to have it all for. And that, that's more of a problem. So, as they are, I think it's quite common that from, from, from what yeah. Fraser told me and elsewhere, it's, it's an indicative figure that they, they're fairly certain it can be delivered. But as we mentioned earlier, national policy is about making the most efficient use of sites. 
So that's probably answers part of the question in terms of this particular site, the landscape impact. Again, we've, we've, we've taken a more detailed assessment, so any planning application stages, you get that level of detailed assessment that covers all of the issues, including landscape and transport the uh, impact and capacity. But I think um, part of the policy asks for a design code to be provided as part of the application, and you'll find within that, it's more than likely that that, that eastern side of the site that does start to um, become a little bit higher than the flatter parts of the site. You, I would expect this hasn't been developed yet, and it's something we've got to discuss with the council off the back of the landscape assessment. Is that probably in that area that the heights of buildings will be controlled a lot, a lot more stringently, density will be lower. Um, you won't get three story houses on that, on that land as it starts to fly. Um, so, yeah, there'll be, there'll, be, there'll be provisions in place to control developments within certain parts of the site that, that are clearly more sensitive from a landscape point of view. Okay. On top of that, then you've got sort of landscaping as well to help. I know it's been mentioned once before, but this will increase the amount of traffic that comes out and down uh, down the uh, uh, Cleek Hill area and the speed of those vehicles as they not only come to the shops in Avon Drive, uh, but also to the schools. And because they can't get to the schools to park, they race up all the little residential roads around here and park and drop off in the morning and then in the evening sit there with their engines running. You know, big four by fours, you know, smoking out the residents in these other places. So, you know, speed restriction, I think, all the way around, not only down Clear Hill, but around Avon Drive would be, uh, would be helpful. And uh, consideration, really, about, you know, as, as many, you know, other alternative cycle routes, etc. Definitely. We're, we're, we're just about to speak to them. They've had the information at times and they've been able to. Uh, assess it, look at what we put forward in terms of our traffic impact assessment. Um, if it isn't necessary to provide any sort of um, mitigation measures, measures in terms of improving junctions, it may be that they, they'll, they'll put forward some schemes to try and introduce some health economy measures if that's necessary. Um, so, again, at the, at the moment we don't know what, what the highway is or what it's going to to do, um, but yeah, that, that, that may well be considerable. I'd have to make a financial contribution towards it. Things like you know, speed cameras, uh, traffic combinations, etc. Talking about that, so mitigation strategy. Okay. So, um, there's nothing else. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll just bring up one more. We're talking about uh, going to the schools. Uh, we have to make sure that the capacity of all the local schools can take take uh, the number of the extra fuel that converge from the schools. <laughs> That's one of the outstanding consequences yeah, we that we haven't had yet, but yeah, we're hoping to get that to <coughs> next week. But yeah, that will, they, they've obviously got a formula, they understand what the capacity of existing schools is uh, in terms of what the development, what children are involved, uh, and the impact that our development will have. They have a standard formula to determine how many children we're going to generate from this development. And clearly, if there's not capacity in those schools, then we we'll have to make a financial contribution to, mm -hmm. to make the revision to, to sort of consumer as well. As it's similar to all the other um, you know, things like health, etc. You know, if there's a need to make financial contributions to mitigate the impact, then we would we'll have to make that. Thank you. So, so you, sorry, because so just another step clarify. Is the figure of 100 houses totally off the table now? It is now. It's a, I mean, we, we can't be certain about um, exactly what this scheme will deliver in terms of numbers at the present time. It, it's, all I can say is it's going to be between 100 and 200. Um, what we're proposing is, as I say, that figure in the, in the plan is, a, is an estimate based on a very high level assessment by the council. They can't, they say, they can't seem to be over, overestimating what the site could deliver if it doesn't deliver 200, then they're, they're going to be 100 houses short. So they're taking a very conservative approach, but their, their emphasis you know, in terms of national policy is about making the most efficient use of site. So you know, the, more that you, the more housing you on an allocated site means that you're making efficient use of land, you're yeah. using less greenfield land. So that's the basic premise, but obviously it needs to be acceptable in all respects. So things like highways and landscape and ecology, and all of those issues need to be satisfied. Yeah, it's just that we're told they're resting the site. Potentially going to be 100 miles, and then we'll be able to double that. So. I, just, I mean, I, 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 also, I, I don't think it's particularly helpful that what you've got is, a, is, a, is an estimation for the purposes of understanding the global figure. And then you've got policy which 
effectively, you know, the policy is designed, it doesn't mention it because it needs to maximize, but it's specifically designed to not have the figure included. And I think that it, it would have been more helpful, you know, if, if the borough council were clearer about the fact that all sites will deliver the, the optimum level of development that they can achieve. So, uh, but I think just to finish off with that, I mean, to me, what you put forward is more, it's a larger area of development than was in the, in the plan which we commented on. So whether it's under development, but the actual ground space occupied is, is a bigger area than what's in the plan that we looked at in the next plan. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, so between now and going forward, you'll need to borrow from one that you mentioned, there'll be a formal submission of plan application, we can comment and will comment on that plan application as and when it happens. That's so we have time in hand to do that. But obviously, you know, we are concerned about the, the implications of additional development within the costly area. Um, and you know, that's what happened for the express our views. So um, could, I, could I just come back just to this just yeah. small point, but I think in the policy it does say um, that the development area will be will we determine what sort of their site specific but this assessment to be able to say as you can see yes. some of the site that's actually on that part is it's going to need to be provided for. So there is some flexibility within that policy to, to you know, want to undertake that progress. I mean, that's still in working progress at the moment, but that is a factor that we have to take. So thank you very much indeed for coming on this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Can I just stretch your legs before we move on to the next item? Well, I'm gonna, the next answer is only going to be very short. I'm hoping so. Stretch and we'll get to it. I'm going to. Just this side. Thank you. 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 Thank um, right, so we can move on. Um, so now we're going to public open session. And so if you wish to ask, ask any further questions or make any comments. Are you very excited about the chicken? Sorry, I'm not going to be can I mention about parking for schools, particularly Thomas More? It's just getting ridiculous. Uh, I live in Ribble Way, just down the road here. Because, because you can't park near the school now, uh, we get cars racing up, dropping kids off, taxis dropping kids off. I, I get that they're going to be dropped off, but uh, the speed that they come up the road is, is wrong. They then park illegally on an evening across everybody's drives. Uh, I regularly go out and very polite to people and say, look, I get the fact you've got to pick your kids up, but would you mind parking not across people's drives and turn your engines off? But it's cold, you know, so they're sat there in the cold car. And uh, it's just stinking with diesel fuel. Uh, so I, I'm getting more and more uh, frustrated with them. And uh, the school didn't seem to want to uh, uh, comment at this minute. So I've left a couple of messages, uh, another one tonight, no response. Uh, and and, and sp sorry, and just just the speed on on Avon Drive uh, at the, outside the church here on the on this bend is getting more and more. People are just racing down there. Uh, so you know, if, if we go further up the Newcastle so right now, row, we have to go for it now. It is it is frightening. Uh, I mean, I'm glad glad they've trimmed the bottom of the trees now. Yes. Because as you come out, you can actually see cars coming. Yeah. Uh, before you you just. <laughs> The car there. And of course, they, 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 they then park just beyond the mini roundabout at the end of Time Crescent, heading up towards this, this way, and they park all there where the bus is supposed to go. And then, of course, you can't see out to get out of the road. Then. It's, uh, yeah, it's becoming a bit of a problem, really. Okay. So, Charlie, Charlie, I bet you Charlie, get us all the side of it. So, so um, yeah, it's a big problem. It's every school. And speeding is a big problem across the borough. Um, we have asked the police to do checks, and they do from time to time do checks. And they last report that they gave to us, they said that when they stand there with a gun, people generally flash the lights and tell them to slow down, so they don't get too many people 
as is normal. Um, the mayor's just introduced a community speed box vehicle, which was I've seen it there, yep, on Avon Drive just recently. Yep, um, trying to do what we can because it's a police issue in terms of the course of speed, the council car prosecuting mm -hmm. the speed. Um, so that's the speeding issue as best we can. We can put in 20 mile an hour zones, but obviously that relies on people having the conscience to abide by those speed limits. And in some of the zones, not everybody is trained. Mm -hmm. um, outside schools, people's behaviour can only be classed as deviant, parking on people's driveways. Yeah. Um, we've put an allocation of funding in to provide a, a, a safety camera on every school that has zigzags across the borough where we can enforce. Um, that's costing £600,000, so that's going in because we recognise it to be a serious problem. Yeah. Um, when an officer goes out, you can call a parking officer and they will come out, and, um, and people do when we issue that number. When they come out, they have to do an observation to make sure the person's not loading. Someone can actually stop on W lines and let people out of the vehicle and into a vehicle, so they have to do observations. As soon as the officer turns up and does his observations, then the people drive off, and then when he goes away, they the cat mouse. Um, we used to have a vehicle that was equipped with a CCTV camera. You could drive past and take people's numbers, and if they were stopped on certain locations, and that would be time present outside Tommy Moore, where we put bars on the pavements where you're not allowed to stop. Yes. And that was very effective, mm -hmm. but the government stopped us from doing that, so we've not had to abandon that whole operation. So, waste of money on the vehicle. Yes. Um, so, I'm at a loss, really. You know, we can only do a certain amount, and that which we can do, we are doing mm -hmm. um, vigorously. But we rely upon cooperation with the police, working together with the police to try and do what we can to, 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 to tackle what is a menace and putting children's lives at risk. Just do the schools cooperate? Do they actually write to parents and say, please be mindful you know, oh, yeah. of, of yeah. you know, people's we have, As a parish council, we've issued them with high base vests to go out and um, patrol outside the schools. We tell them to park on Ashmead Road, not to park on Tynecastle because it's very dangerous on the bend there when they park. Um, the school has a, a community meeting occasionally, which they invite people to. Occasionally, Peter and I have attended. Um, but the school has no more leverage, really, than, than we have, it seems. I mean, even with Scott's school, as a parent, we get very stern reminders not to park near the school, not to congest surrounding streets all the time. And you know, some parents just don't observe it, and they are quite sternly worded by this point. Yeah. So the schools do not want to get a worse reputation locally. <coughs> some of the parents, when you ask them to, you know, turn their engines off, and, you know, move so they can actually get onto your own drive, you know, the 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 reasonably polite, and they they do it. Others just say, "Well, I'm waiting for my son and daughter." Uh -huh. Yeah, it's just very like, it's very good. Okay. You just feel like blocking them in. <laughs> Debbie Wilson has been out on patrol outside the school with me, confronting parents. Really. And some of the parents are, are objection to her. Right. Scandalous, isn't it? Yeah, it's awful. Okay, thank you. I think we need to move on if that's all right. So, thank you very much, Nick, for raising that point. Item 6 <coughs> of 1 to approve the fact of reconciliation and then campaign, which has been so late. Yes. Is everyone happy? Are you guys happy to approve? Thank you. Peter's um, actually presented his uh, signed his copy of the thing. Is anyone else able to sign that? Who yeah. else is his signature? Yeah. Yeah. It's just me. So that's approved. Thank you for that. Um, item 6 2, an application for the Rainbow Skies and Ranger for a grant of 244 pound 65. And that has been uh, made work of the state with a state of their accounts and all that stuff. Is everyone happy to grant that application? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Great. Thank you for that. Um, item 6 3, to agree the budget 2019 20. Review and reset reserves and agree with the level of preset request. So, um, <coughs> we've got a copy of the spreadsheet, which has been circulated, we've got paper copies and we've got electronic copies as well. So, what I'm going to do, if it's okay, is run through the expenditure items first. And then, see what we're going to do, uh, that's what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, which is if there's any adjustments, I'll make the adjustments and we'll work out what the overall implications are for that. And then we'll agree with the preset we're going to set as a result of all that. So we're going to start off with, um, as I say, expenditure items. So it's, it's um, up line 18 onwards. Um, so we're off with a general, we've got a start cost there. And so just to, I'm kind of sorry, I'm just explaining to the user. Okay. 
in general terms, it's basically a sort of continuum. It's a budget that continues what we've been this year. It's assuming um, a standard, if you like, level of activity. Um, we're obviously coping with the fact that one, 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 one member of staff, Sue, covering for where the formula has Sue and Alex working. So Sue is doing the additional hours. Um, that, the, the absence of Alison has had a financial impact this year, which, if you like, is not going to be there after, after the work, uh, continuing after, uh, after May. But, uh, so it seems we've got a, a, a fairly similar level of activity over the next, over the next year. And we'll come into details perhaps in a bit, in a bit as we go through. So, is everyone happy with the, uh, the staff cost item as, as laid out? So we will raise our hand. Um, administration, we've got some we've got the proposals there, uh, but the telephone broadband, the phone call, etc. Everyone happy with those? Okay. And then we get into the general expenses, so we might be all the um, Again, it's all very standard things. It looks like we haven't spent anything on council training this year, so because we had council, of course, we were going to get one. Sorry, no, I'm not going to you. I was intended to. Okay. I just keep, I do encourage everyone to follow this if they can. Um, they're advertised through the Bedfordshire Bugle, the BAT PC newsletter. And they are, you know, they are all very you know, friendly, good courses, they're quite short. Um, so next year, hopefully, we still budget for training for councillors, and we might need councillors up in May. So, um, everyone else happy with the general expenses items as, as laid out? Okay. And um, subscriptions, we've got some figures there for our various subs that we're paying for various organisations. I'm happy with those. Move on to the lot expenses, line 71 onwards. Um, so, again, it's sort of pretty much rolling things forward. Everyone happy with the items in there? <coughs> okay. um, Note the compost toilets budgeted as zero pounds. It's like if you do it, but you would get it wrong. Mm. Um, the allotment income is just some obviously projections about what we may get, depending on the level of um, uptake from uh, allotment tenants. Um, <clears throat> on to community initiatives, what's in the detail. Um, obviously, this year we didn't have on the community by neighbor plan. And these are one of the areas where this Patch Council are a bit behind many other councils in, in the borough now. And I think it's something that perhaps the new Patch Council will need to, to look at after the elections in May. So there's you know, an element of finance in there if it's necessary or if it's agreed. Um, and there is also finance still available, grant finance available to support many of the plans. Um, the second forum is, I think, in the spare pattern, even though we've had meetings, we've not been billed by. Seven months for some reason. Okay. So, maybe it's going to be given as a freebie. We are basically. I don't know why you have it then. It's been in the diary. You can just add. Yeah, I'll just check on that. I'll just want to thank you for the generosity. No, I'll just check on that. Okay. Um, Christmas tree. This is an item that, that we're suggested a change. So, for some, we've had now two years of our wonderful Christmas lights and we've been putting sort of learning and this year we're able to do a bit more than we did last year, or sorry, last year we did more than we did before. One of the suggestions is maybe do a bit more still, look at what some of the other factors are doing around their Christmas nights. We kind of do more on the day of the degree, more to do stuff, maybe at some of the, um, the shops, even, you know, nights around there, just to help enhance the area. So I've just put an extra couple of thousand pounds, put a suggestion in the, in the budget to, um, to allow us to do a bit more around that. So, so, anyway, it's just budgeting. It's budgeting provision to allow us to then do a bit of a on that's not if you want to. Is everyone happy with that as a budgetary item? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the community grants we also just did a bit out today, which is great. Um, still not getting enough applications from community organisations. Um, but Gavin on the Green, just suggesting a slightly higher grant for Gavin on the Green or budget for Gavin on the Green for next year. Still so suggesting only 50 quid extra. To 50 quid doesn't actually go very far from an inflation point of view, so I'm suggesting an extra 200 pounds on top of that. Um, spring Mill is still, have you seen the citizens still budgeted for that? Play schemes, um, we obviously talked about that already in the last play schemes for the next 
Easter next summer. So it's in the mountain there. Um, so that, that's all right for everyone. And the main item that I'm doing suggesting a slight significant increase is around transport, social transport issues. So we agreed um, a meeting two ago to fund help fund the class fee proposal for the work stage, which as we understand it, it's probably not going to happen this time actually year. Because the books can be successful in the open space, we have to go through a slightly longer process to get the power up. But essentially, if we don't spend it this year, the money can go into the reserves to be spent when that agreement is given. But on top of that, I'm suggesting that we actually catch in for next year for whether it's, again, going back to the real time information for our shelters or CCP or whatever. But there's various things like that which are, in a sense, are fairly straightforward to do from a parish council perspective. It's just getting the permissions and then it's just funding it. So that's what I'm suggesting an extra, well, uh, suggesting £4,000, uh, sorry, £12,000 for next year, if that's okay. Um, so I'm going to go on to the next, next pages. Um, <coughs> obviously, this, the upper load of things is finished, so there's no like, budget spent on that for next year. Um, suggesting You've got the Motory Park, Motor, sorry, the Motory Water Play area is likely to be uh, under draft control. And so we've got 1,500 pounds in there to cover um, some general repairs. And then maybe you know, just spend more people's time back to the place and you can pick when you take over. So is everyone happy with those community initiatives, budget items? Can we all like it? So moving on to Waverley Free. Um, I think it's sort of fairly similar based upon you know, compared to last year. Um, we've got some money in the reserves already designated for things like footpaths to Clutton Grove's place. <coughs> and also, we're looking at the, the replacement of the galley, which is uh, reaching the end of its, its life. So, um, we're suggesting putting an extra £5,000 in the budget for footpath repairs for the next financial year. Which would essentially top up what we've already got in reserves. Um, plus, um, yeah, plus an extra seven thousand pounds or more for extra play equipment or new play equipment. So it just allows us to do both play equipment, footpath repairs, and construction. Is everyone happy with making yes. free? Yes. Great. I'm on to break the community centre then. I might want to talk to you on this. Um, so again, you know, I guess. We are still getting grips with what needs to be done at the community centre. Uh, we've done a event, we've done some uh, items already. The just uh, lighting has just been installed, it's not yet wired up in the car park and put the lighting up there. Um, so we're just suggesting an extra contribution into reserve uh, just to keep topping up. Uh, but also, we know we've got the, the lift that needs to be sealed to prevent water getting into the, into the, into the, into the, the lift there. Um, and we're still planning on the, we know that some of the recording needs to be replaced and have some quotes for that and need to work out whether that, which is most appropriate, or if the end is not appropriate, and decide to come to the important for the replacement of boiler, because this at some point is going to go and it's going to be out there. Um, is everyone happy with the community centre items? Perhaps just made up. Um, which, in that case, that brings us down to the bottom line, um, which is essentially. I'm going to go sorry, it brings us back up to the income. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, we've obviously budgeted for half thousand for newsletters, the fit payments of the PV powers on the community centre, um, and the income from what people did have parents pay when they did take part in the in the uh, place fees and the VAT even. Um really the community associations have agreed to fund five hundred pounds for the government agreement for a um, uh, to cover the cost of the ride in the summer, which is great. Um, and what I'm proposing is um, a preset of 121,000 for the next year. Oops. That's all guessing there, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is basically it's a hundred pound increase in preset from this year. But it's a marginal 0.1 percent reduction. It's, so it would drop it from £34 to pounds around the £33.96. So it's, it keeps it in around the number of years, which is the borough. 
come to the light of our atoms when they're sending out their bills. Um, the capital can never get stuck. So, is everyone happy with that budget as laid out? Give the free set of 121,000 pounds. Yeah. Sorry, can I just say that as a favor? As it's the most significant thing we do in a year. Um, so that's the budget, the approved preset, and then, sorry, the last thing just to agree on that is the common reserve spreadsheet. It just, it just illustrates what's actually in the reserves now in the budget headings. And it's worth saying, just a reminder, that the Women's Park Fund is still there. The money that we received originally from the Bank Council is about £4,414 outstanding. So I know we've still got challenges about things we can't do because of the lack of adoption of the teams in the site. Is someone happy with the reserves spreadsheet? Yes. Yep. Thank you very much. That's uh, that was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I can move on to item seven, which is not about the women's part of the third action. This uh, no action points. Um, this time has been mostly quiet. Women's Park, uh, the two things that are uh, ongoing in the yellow lines have been uh, very good leaders to the, uh, the guidance of the lines, have been so far as I'm aware, no need for any, any enforcement, which is great. Um, I've had a few comments from people saying that it's easier to pass on solutions, so that's good. Uh, the only other things we've been managing between us and the team of uh, three of us uh, to, to lock the country park gates of an evening up in first thing in the morning. So that seems to be your plan in very few months. In North Zealand, in the last, no, I think the last time I saw a car in there was probably about. Was it just before Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a, quite a while. So the, the message is obviously there. I didn't mention the sign is, is wearing out. Or so, so that, that was replaced. Yeah, they've been replaced by that. On the same day, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> and also, you remember there was a comment yesterday about um, people smoking elsewhere on the estate now. Yeah. Displacement activity, which we'll say. Yeah. Which is, I uh, saw the comments about the reporting that they need to report to the police. So, uh, any questions for Chris on that one? Thank you very much, Um And um, item eight. If you offered to pay 50 quid for this, is it 50 pounds? We said 25 percent, which was oh, 25 what? 25 percent, yes, so it was about 80 pounds. Is it 80? Okay, whatever the purchase price was, 25 percent. So, thank you, Chris. Um, <coughs> so this is the, the beacon which we had on green, the gas burner, um, which after the event. Um, went into my garage. We all know how to do it. We're happy. Chris offered to take off our hands and not make a donation. Yeah. And as he just said, 25% of the government happy with that. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much, Chris, come back. Um, and we've now mentioned Nigel was doing this about saying that's not my further action. Um, Red but are there any questions on those kind of standard items? Thank you very much. Now, I notice I notice we have received a report from the four borough councillors. It's not actually on the agenda for tonight, so because we tried to compress the agenda tonight in order to allow us to have a yearly discussion and then this. So, can I be very, can I just say thank you to the borough councillors who sent the reports? Can I ask if they have any questions at the council? Can you talk to them outside the meeting? If that's all right. <laughs> yeah. um, and the last thing is just a comment. We did receive a consultation request from the Fire and Rescue Service about their budget for the, the next year. And I think in the past we have chosen not to comment on that because essentially how do we it's very hard for us to ask to second guess the merits of another organization's budget. So we've chosen not to comment. Is everyone happy not to comment this year? In that case, that's the last item. The next piece is this item. I just commented that we don't have the borough council reports on the agenda, so if anyone has any questions.
Next meeting is on the 7th of February at 7.30. Um, let me see you guys in the back of your attendance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.